Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers here with another in the episode of Carb Addiction. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And today we're going to talk about sustainability of a carbohydrate-free life. The obvious sustainability comes from sustaining a carb-free diet. This episode is not about the diet, but when you remove carbohydrates from your life, you are removing your emotion management rock. You're killing your best friend. And if you don't understand why this happened to you in the first place and how important it is to replace not only the role of carbohydrates as a nutritional substance, but more importantly, to replace the role of carbohydrates as an emotion management lifestyle, you're always going to relapse. If your goal is to treat obesity and to lose weight, you're going to fail. Because obesity is the consequence of the problem, not the cause. However, if you understand that the cause is a substance abuse problem that is based upon an initial deficient emotion management system, where you are not raised with and do not have effective skills and tools to deal with your emotional needs, and you then develop a dysfunctional relationship with a drug called carbohydrates to manage those emotional needs, you're not going to understand the long-term value of addressing the emotion management cause. So in this episode, we're going to talk about particular strategies, particular things that are prevalent in so many people that have a vulnerability to addictive behavior, whether you're an alcoholic, a heroin addict, a smoker, uh, or an obese person or a type 2 diabetic, all of these things are identical. And as part of the transformation away from your drug of choice, cultivating certain changes in who you are as a human being, how you approach life, how you let life affect you, is critically important. So for this episode, I'm going to lean very heavily on someone who is better than anybody else in this field, a woman by the name of Brene Brown. And I would urge you all to Google her, to look her up. She, her work is absolutely phenomenal in terms of taking back control of your own self-esteem, your own self-confidence, your own life. This episode is called Self-Approval is self-care. And if this resonates with you, please share this with your friends on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, email them, text them. We'd love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram if this resonates with you. We also have a Patreon account. And if this really has meaning for you and you want a little bit more special attention, sign up on our Patreon, Patreon account at Carb Addiction Doc. But let's go into this. Let's do the dive into the gifts of imperfection. I call this coming to terms with your own mediocrity. And the way it works, folks, is this, that particularly people who are raised in an authoritarian environment. Let me step back for a second. You may have heard me talk about this before. But the investment of effort into anything, When you invest effort into a task, into some intended task, the return of that investment is a sense of accomplishment and a sense of pride based on the effort. And if you recognize that pride with a self-approval, an intentional self-approval in little increments, in little increments, that pride in the act, in the effort, raises self-esteem and self-confidence, and you're able to put more effort into other things, and you have emotional well-being from things that you do. However, there's a particular subset of people, people that come from an authoritarian background, where we are raised based on the expectation, based on the result. And no matter how much effort we put into something, we're always falling short. And this gap, instead of being filled with a sense of pride and accomplishment, is filled with a sense of failure. And I'm not good enough. I went for a walk, but it wasn't long enough or far enough or fast enough. The value of the walk is lost and is contaminated by the negativity of not being perfect enough. And 
a large part of the discussion in terms of self-care from Brene and from me is about coming to terms with effort and ignoring outcome when it comes to things that give us pride. And the more you can cultivate um, these several behaviors, letting go of perfectionism and perfectionistic methodology and cultivating authenticity and mediocrity, I'm okay being, uh, being okay the better off you're going to be from an emotion management perspective and the less likely you are to fill that void with a drug and carbohydrates are a drug. So let's dive into this. Brene calls it the gifts of imperfection. I call it coming to terms with your own mediocrity. And the first one is cultivating authenticity and letting go of what people think. When we come from an authoritarian background, we are desperately seeking approval from other people. And a large part of what we do as human beings is to garner a positive resonance from somebody that we respect, somebody in our environment that says, hey, I approve of you because we do not have the capacity for self-approval. Remember, this chapter is self-approval is self-care. So when we can be authentic about feeling great about the little thing that we do. I don't care if your painting looks like a mess. I care about the fact that you love to paint. But if the value of your painting is showing somebody else how brilliant you are, and they criticize your artwork, that is highly erosive, highly destructive to your self-esteem and your self-confidence. But if you're proud of the act, if you're proud of what you've done, if you have cultivated that authenticity, you can let go of what other people think, you can take your source of validation and internalize it so that you can validate to yourself that you are a good human being. You don't need other people with some contaminated imprint of who you are as a human being. So the first one is cultivating authenticity, letting go of what people think. Cultivating self-compassion and letting go of perfectionism. And that's basically what we've talked about so far. Letting go of some expected result, some ridiculously lofty outcome. And cultivating the self-compassion that is based on the effort. I don't care what the result is when you're doing things for pleasure, when you're doing things for emotion management. What I care about is how effectively they resolve that emotion that emotional tension based upon how much you love to do what you did rather than be based on the perfect outcome. If you can let go of perfectionism and cultivate self-compassion, you're well on the way. Having a resilient spirit, cultivating a resilient spirit and letting go of numbing and powerlessness. Of course, life's going to knock you down. Of course, you're going to fall short. We all do. We're human. But saying, okay, I did a great job. I did the best I could today. Tomorrow, here's what I'm going to do to do even better. If you keep challenging yourself going forward, you keep improving. And it's a positive spiral. If you keep beating the crap out of yourself, I'm a terrible person. I'm a total failure. Look how bad I am. You're numbing and you're powerless. And then you need drugs to make you feel good. Don't be doing that. Have a resilient spirit where you challenge yourself every day. Proud of what I did today. Going to do this to do better. Instead of, did a terrible job. I failed. I screwed up. I'm miserable. I cheated. I... It's the past. Let it go. Learn from it. Let it go. Apply it to tomorrow. Don't beat yourself up. Don't be powerless. Have a resilient spirit. Bounce back. Challenge yourself every day. Cultivating gratitude and joy Letting go of scarcity and fear of the dark. I should do this. I have to do this. I've got to work. I don't have time. You're destroying yourself. Take time to do fun things. Take time to do pleasure. Be self-indulgent. Don't be self-sacrificing. When your locus of validation is external to you, you'll sacrifice yourself continuously for approval from others. And you disregard your own emotional needs to garner a favorable comment, a favorable attitude from people around you. And they'll never, ever give you uncontaminated approval. The only person that can give you uncontaminated approval is you yourself. 
So cultivate gratitude in things that you do, not for the result, but for the pleasure of the effort. Be proud of yourself on a regular basis. Acknowledge that pride. Self-approve regularly. And you'll build up your self-esteem and your self-confidence. But don't, I've got to, I've got to, I have to, I have to, I'm too late, I've got to. You're destroying yourself with fear of the dark. Abundance of pleasure is what you're seeking. Cultivate intuition and trust faith. Let go of the need of certainty. Certainty is all about the outcome. The outcome is irrelevant when you're doing things for pleasure. Yeah, it's nice to win at a game of cards, but it's so much nicer just to play. And too many people won't play cards or a game because they're not going to win. And they think of, oh, I don't play cards well, I'm terrible. You lose things that you do for emotional management. Cultivate the creativity, cultivate the intuition, cult, trust faith that you're going to love the game, irrespective of the outcome. You don't need to be certain in order to start something. You don't need to be certain that the painting is going to be perfect. You don't need to be certain that you're going to run five miles. But I want you to have the creativity of painting. I want you to have the creativity of going for the walk or the run. Because that is effective, healthy emotion management. And approve of the act, not the outcome. Cultivate creativity and let go of comparison. Don't compare yourself to everybody else. There's always going to be somebody better. There's always going to be somebody better. Keep challenging yourself to do better tomorrow, but not in comparison with somebody else. Yes, if you're a professional athlete, if you are productive in what you do, is what you're doing is part of your productivity, be as perfect as you can be. Compare yourself to others. But when it comes to compassion, when it comes to things that you do for emotional resolution, it's about you and yourself. It's not about other people. It is not about other people, people. It's about comparing yourself to yourself and finding joy and pleasure in being better yourself every day rather than beating yourself up, well, I'm not as good as them. Don't look to other people as a comparator of the pleasure you derive for yourself because we get pleasure from little things where the result is irrelevant. Cultivate play and rest. And this for me is one of the most important ones. Cultivate play and rest and let go of exhaustion as a status symbol and productivity as self-worth. In my profession as a physician, I see a lot of doctors who are defined by their white coat. Yeah, I'm wearing scrubs because they just look sexy. I'm not wearing scrubs to tell people I'm a doctor. I'm just Rob Sivers. And yeah, sometimes my job is to be a doctor, but I don't define myself as that doctor. Too many people live in their white coats and they can't escape the compassion of being human because they're defined by their job. They have to be working all the time and the only self-worth they have is by being considered the best they can be as the worker. You are not a worker, you're a human being. And if you can be a good, humble, grateful, empathetic human being, that matters more than any professional accolade you can possibly have. There will always be another warm body to fill your space in the conveyor belt that is your job. But you are a human being and you have human beings around you that care about you, that love you. And you, if you don't have those, you can build those relationships. You don't build them by being productive, by self-sacrificing yourself because you're exhausted and have to work more. Compassion actually makes productivity better. You'll always be a productive person. But how does that make you feel? If you really want on your gravestone one day, he was the best worker, then keep doing it. But I want to be a good guy. That's what I want on my gravestone. And I want to be remembered as a human human being. Not as a doctor or hard worker. Cultivate calm, stillness and joy. Let go of anxiety as a lifestyle. 
calmness, stillness, and joy comes from frequent periods of meditation, whether that's in prayer, whether it's while you're working out in your yard, while it's on your walk. The best way to absolve anxiety is to connect with and process the issues that are causing the anxiety. And the only way you are going to get into understanding and connecting with those issues is by allowing your subconscious to re reveal to you what is bubbling under the surface. And the only way you can connect with the source of your anxiety and process through it so you can let it go is to create meditative spaces, mind cleansing moments throughout the day in your life. Go for that walk, have that prayer time, have that meditative time, talk empathetically with a friend, share your concerns, let go of the anxiety because you no longer need the anxiety to defend against dealing with the issue. You confront the issues, you process them, you deal with them, you learn to live with them. The anxiety dissipates, it dissolves, it goes away. Anxiety as a lifestyle requires drugs to manage it. You do not want to be a drug addict anymore. Deal with your anxiety, deal with your emotion tension through fun things that you do irrespective of the outcome. Cultivating meaningful work, letting go of self-doubt and supposed to. This is a big one in the job. Because we're raised in an authoritarian way, we raise raised that no matter how well we do, there's always that gap between productivity and, and excellence. Look, Dad, I scored an, an A on my math test. I came second in the class. Well, who came first and what question did you get wrong? Never good enough. And you're full of self-doubt. I'm not good. I'm terrible at this. And we cut away things that we ought to do for pleasure and fun because we believe ourselves not to be good enough. We're filled with self-doubt and we're supposed to work all the time. No, we're not. Meaningful work means doing the best you can to be productive, and tomorrow's another day, now I'm taking care of myself. An authoritarian person will always be productive, but the greatest contaminant to that productivity is the absence of an effective emotion management system. A healthy emotion management system allows you to be more intensely productive because you can stay focused. Cultivate meaningful work and let go of self-doubt and supposed to. <laughs> the last one, cultivate song, laughter, and dance, and let go of having to be cool and always in control. Don't care about what other people think of you. Provide fun, pleasure, joy, and enjoyment from the expression of how you feel, of how you are in the moment. Judge your own pleasure and joy, not through the eyes of others by trying to be cool and controlling the environment. Have fun. Even if you look a little bit like an idiot, everybody, everybody will look like an idiot from time to time, whether you intend to or not. I'm not saying look like an idiot intentionally, but it doesn't matter, folks. You don't have to be perfect all the time. Be you, be yourself, chat, have fun, acknowledge when you're a little afraid. You're going to be absolutely fine. The opposite of too little is not too much. The opposite of little, too little is enough. Trade in self-sacrifice for self-indulgence. Make yourself proud. Self-approve of everything you do irrespective of the outcome. Self-approval is self-care and you no longer need drugs in your life to make you feel good. No carbs. No obesity, no diabetes, healthy emotion management.